I met a bitch down the street one time, and let me tell you, she smelled like experience, and I had such a time with her. Every time we divulge <laughs> into this boy. Every time, supper town, you know, sit down, enjoy yourself. When you're the baddest man in all the country, Ooh, let me ain't tell no you. other thing you could do but be the baddest. There ain't nothing, nothing keeping me down. Not these hard times. Let me tell you, because I've been through some hard times. I'm going through these hard times right now, and they will never, ever hold my ass down because you know why? Because I'm the fucking true. I'm the juice. Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling, episode 76, Poor Impactful Pricks. Oh, yeah, you like that title? I know you do, because I do. Uh, once you listen to the episode, it's going to resonate really well throughout those brains that you listen out in the JP Woo. With me in the studio, as always, is Threaten the Savage. What's going on, Threaten? Hey, man, super excited. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, man, super excited. Well, I, I'm trying to keep it together. Uh, I thought I had good tolerance for alcohol. No, we just took a shot, an we airplane like shot at Jim Beam Apple. Baby here. shot, if you watch the <laughs> intro. Look at this thing. Like, it's like, oh, wait. it's so small. It's so small, but it fucked up his balls. Yeah. Um, about to jump out the window. I'm good. I had like four buds before that. No, I'm getting down on a Modelo. Well, you're the Terminator, bro. Yeah. <laughs> until until tomorrow with, morning, then I'm the best. What fun. do you need? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Next! I don't care if I'm fired. Get the fuck out of my store. Anyways, it's another week uh, coming off the heels of uh, a couple of really, really fucking stellar episodes. Uh, last week, episode 75, Max Wood Grilled. Uh, thank you, everybody, for checking that out and being a part of the party with us. I had a fucking amazing time doing that shit i know Bodie did i know jj dylan did i know uh fucking tom from i illuminate events had a great time threaten you fucking you loved it. it i loved it i didn't know anybody i got to talk to so thomas is awesome yeah um, yeah thomas but yeah uh jj uh dude everybody's cool all the two days the of fans. dropping knowledge from jj it was yeah great. yeah yeah all the fans all the interaction yeah. we got to kick it it all out with uh shout out to steve uh, and Eric from Warrior Wrestling, we got to kick it with them dudes, and uh, Dave and Maddie from uh, the Hub Chicago. Big Ed the Assassin was there. I mean, we were just keeping it fucking real all weekend long, dude. Shout out to the mysterious human beings <laughs> that brought uh, like four hundred cases of beer and a bunch of taco like ingredients in the parking lot of the Sears oh, Center. Yeah, yeah, those because dudes were we dope. ran out of everything. Yeah, we then, we got off the party bus yeah. and we come in there like you want some beers and tacos. I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah! yeah. We got off the bus and somebody goes, "Hey Just, hey Juice, uh, uh I heard that Joey Janela's doing something in the parking lot. Was that what is that what it was? I I don't know. So a it was lot something. Of, a lot and of people we're like, let's go. Shit. Let's go this way. Yeah, yeah. We and, just walked towards the entrance and man like we, and we got offered fucking Tacos and cervezas. Man, and we were offering those guys, like, can we pitch in? Can we do something? Thank you. They're yeah. like, no, man, it's for the cause. It's for wrestling. And they were yeah. so awesome. Whoever wrestling! You, yeah. <laughs> whoever you guys whoever you guys were, dude, you guys, hey. em, you guys embodied what we tried to. It was hey, awesome. Hey, salut. Salut. Salut, bitches. Sorry. You got to actually take a drink. And you just called uh, people who were shouting out bitches. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, threatened take, <laughs> taking swigs. And I gotta go. Tonight and threw him off his game. Uh, but yeah, that shit was a good time. So, shout out to Max Wood Grilled, uh, everybody involved in that whole weekend. Game Changer Wrestling, Black Label Pro, uh, Warrior Wrestling, All Elite Wrestling. We we fucking we had a great time. We killed it. Doesn't seem like it's been what like two three weeks ago like two now. Two weeks ago. Wow, dude. That's the shit I want to do <laughs> with my life. You know, I want to live that all Dude, the it time. Was, it was my introduction. It was, great. it was three days. Thank you to my brother. He let us crash yeah, in his yeah. place. 
Um, he came did. out and watched this for a hot second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like got sick of it and was like, "Man, these guys are up." No, you know what bullshit. he told me? You know what he told me when we left? What? Because he he doesn't like he he's he doesn't even touch wrestling stuff. But he how do you say his name? I don't want to put Nacho. Uh, his name is Nenad. 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 But, but you call him Nacho. Nacho. Kevin Nacho. Nacho. He Nacho. goes by Nash. Like Kevin Nash. Yeah, he goes by Nash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, he, he came in and he watched us, took a couple pictures. Some of the sick pictures you see on Facebook and stuff, he took them on his fancy iPhone nice. X or whatever. Sorry, I'm about to barf. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, What's the P stand for? But he told, me, he told me afterwards, he goes, you guys were having so much fun. He had like three drinks. He goes, mm. I had to leave. He's like, because once you guys got on the bus, he's like, I would have stayed there the rest of the night. Made trouble, like he just he had to go. So uh, yeah, it was That'd a be beautiful a for trouble, dude. It was it was a it was a perfect fucking day. Yeah, like everything about it was great. We got so lucky. Kevin was awesome from Max. Like everybody on yeah. the bus is cool. Kevin we met Michael, some really yeah. cool people to, uh, on the bus. Like you know, we started the weekend like it was Friday to Sunday packed. Like we did not take yeah. a break. No, like, no. We forced ourselves Sunday to sleep a little bit before Warriors, Warrior. But like we still like. Dude, it was packed. It was great. Yeah. It was so and then we fun. ended up at Lencioni's <laughs> before. Right. And yeah. Fucking good shot of that. What up, Jack? How you One doing, more bro? Beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a great I had a great time. You know, we could talk all day about um you know shit we did during that weekend, but that's behind us now. So yes. moving on. Moving on. Also, before you do that, um, we got a backlog of stuff. So if you follow us on the YouTube channel, yeah, jpdub.com. A bunch of cool bonus stuff. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of companion stuff. Uh, episode 75, we'll have a companion video. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to make it uh, a little more accessible for you guys and watchable. Not that it's unwatchable, but we want to present it as it's still going to be raw. So you still get that JP Dub raw, you know, metal, metal fucking vibe to it. But it's, it, it's going to be, it's not going to be no bullshit, you know, like. There's some there's some editing you got to do. It doesn't matter what medium or yeah. of entertainment you're in. You, you're gonna also, have to. Also, up. Up. <laughs> fucked up. But you yeah, piece of shoe. Um. Anyways, yeah. So we do have a companion video. So look out for that. And real quick, I want to announce too. I would like to thank uh, Andre Corbiel of WrestlingWithWrestling dot com. You can now find a lot of our content, uh, like our highlight videos and podcast episodes and stuff at wrestling with wrestling.com i'd like to thank andre um who i've been following for a while now he's uh based out in uh <laughs> one of the mainstays of uh canada professional wrestling um i mean it's where the heart foundation is from the whole heart family uh you're thinking of fucking professional wrestling in canada you're thinking of uh calgary alberta you know and uh, so now the JP Dub has an even further reach out in Calgary, Alberta, thanks to Andre Corbiel. And uh, we'll be having him on the uh, show here soon. So I'd like to thank him and WrestlingWithWrestling.com. You guys can check them out and find JP Dub shit, exclusive JP Dub shit um, on there and on their YouTube and the website. And also you can find us at J- on syndicate via syndication in California through Mod Podcast. Jazel Modcast Network. I'm sorry, it's the gym, the gym beam kicking in. You know, whatever. We'll keep it with you guys. I fucked up. You know, you guys can. Hey, when you're listening to this shit, you could just chant at home like, "You fucked up, juice fucked up, juice fucked up." <laughs> and I was just looking at it, but like, "You're right." I'm gonna throw those highs at you all night as we get rolling into the fucking intro and shit. So once again, you know, <laughs> thank you everybody for listening. We're on Facebook, Instagram. At Juice Pro Wrestling on Twitter at JP Dub Podcast. You can find us at jpdub.com. And the really cool thing that I just started doing right now, if you hit us up on Facebook or Instagram, um, when you go to our website, it's a link tree. Um, now, so when you click that fucking link tree, it will give you everything. You can go there and find us. You can find our Spotify. You can find our iTunes. You can find Handsome Prick merch. Uh, pretty soon you'll be able to find JP Dub merch. You're going to find everywhere we're fucking at. You will be able to find it. So take it easy. Take it easy. But anyways, we want to get uh let's get going into the show. You know, we, we got a little backtracked on this shit, but um let's just rip right into it with the news and the fucking recaps of what's been going on in the wrestling world lately. Some really, really fucking big news, exciting news uh for me. Impact wrestling. 
parent company Anthem's Anthem. I said Anthem, didn't I? Yeah, you got it. What a piece of shit. Um, Anthem Sports and Entertainment has acquired majority <laughs> shareholdership. Say it one more time. Anthem. Okay. Sorry. Go on. I will fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Anthem Sports and Entertainment has acquired um, Access TV. That's a huge fucking announcement. So for all you haters out there that have been, you know, jiving on Impact for the longest time, we've said it. We said it a fucking year ago. The Impact was coming back to smack you in the nutsack, and you didn't believe us. Well, look at it now. <gasps> poo, 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 poo. In the nuts. Low They're low. coming back. They, they, Man, I'm so fucking pumped for Impact and Bound for Glory and all the shit they're doing with Warrior Wrestling and Zello Pro throughout uh, October um, from the 18th through the 20th. That's going to be Bound for Glory fucking weekend. JP Dub will be there. We're going to be ripping shit up as only we can here. Yeah. And uh, uh, huge fucking news because Access TV, it, for those of you out there, and I know there are some cable providers that still might not get it, um, but they are they were on fucking Pursuit Channel, which is another channel that Anthem Sports and Entertainment owns, but it's a it's a fucking niche channel. It's like hunting and fishing and shit. And then you had Impact Wrestling. So thank God for fucking Twitch because they were able to get out and get a little more expansive on that. And it's fucking free, you know? So it's easier to get to. Yeah, yeah. But in uh, Access TV, for those of you that don't know, and for those of you that do fucking know, that are involved in the professional wrestling community, is also the home of New Japan Pro Wrestling and WOW Women of Wrestling. So I, going forward, it's going to be interesting to see, oh, okay, are they going to keep all these shows? Is that going to – and I know uh, at least Impact with WOW um, – Tessa Blanchard's the WOW Women of Wrestling Champion, WOW Superheroes, or whatever you want to call it. And Kira Hogan wrestles there. They've had a lot of their female talent there. So to think that there could be some partnership or inner exchanging of talents is not unrealistic. I don't think they you know, are going to go anywhere else because, oh, well, we have Impact now, so all these other wrestling shows have to go out the door. I don't believe in that. I think if they can still maintain, why not? And then, especially with New Japan, thank you for that. Um, fuck, man, you got three of the fucking. I, I, I don't know how into wow um, that the public, the populace, really is, but I dig it. I watched it. You know, I got, I have cable now. Thanks, Chris Montez. <laughs> um, I, I've been watching it, and it, it's fucking really good, man. It's good. It's a modern day glow. Without a lot of bullshit, you know, like it, I'm not knocking Glow back in the day because I watched it, right? And I was into it, but nowadays you get the same stuff, the same storyline. Mm -hmm. There is an argument to be made that the females in wrestling in certain promotions, like Wow, yeah, are better at storytelling, yeah, and just as athletic as the men. Yeah, Fair come at me, <laughs> come on me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but easy. man, they got fucking take it easy, guy. <laughs> There's so much going yeah. on now with Access. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you that don't know, Access is owned by Mark Cuban. And what? yeah, yeah. And what it is is I as far as I know, the business details in this situation, um, in this deal, if you wheel, Impact Anthem Sports and Entertainment has purchased majority shareholder interest in this. So they are a partner right now with Mark Cuban, who's one of the richest men in the world, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He's, you know, he started Access TV, which I like as a channel because it's, it's kind of like us. We're all over the place. They're all over the place. You know, music, sports, fucking wrestling, whatever. We're just like Mark Cuban. Yeah, yeah, just like Mark. Hey, what up, Mark? How you doing, bro? Um, and now that Steve Harvey which is really weird, <laughs> is involved in this deal. I'm not bullshitting you. Man. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that fucking weird? Mustache blessed by God himself. I'm telling you, son. But this is huge for Impact because they are a company that has been on the rebound for a couple years now since they sold out to Anthem, and so many people dogged them. And, and I get where you guys are coming from with a lot of it. I stuck through a lot of that shit. You know, and when we first started this podcast, and a uh, shout out to my boy Jeff Webb, we had him on. Uh, we did an episode, I think it was shit back in the 30s. You have to go back in the archive and look at it. But uh, 
the return of impact uh turn of impact uh talking about it then how they were on the up and up they got the right guys behind the scenes with uh if you listen to chris jericho's podcast he just said scott Demore and uh a really good interview yeah yeah dude um don Callis, who are they are the the bad brains behind fucking impact wrestling you know and they have turned it around they have righted the ship man everybody i think there are it's it's a place now it's a destination place where wrestlers can look and like it just signed like to neil dashwood and you have guys like brian cage sammy callahan the fucking lucha bros who i think they're done now there but I mean, they went there. You know, it's it's not a place. There's no stigma anymore of like, I don't want to go to Impact. No, it's it's a fucking place to be right now. The yeah. only thing I could say negative about them at the moment is like, what the fuck's going on with Killer Cross? That's, you know, and they kind of loosely touched on that on Jericho's show. It's like, ah, oh, we can't really talk about that. So whatever, whatever's going can on we there. we talk about that? We could talk about that. What is up with Killer Cross? I it's I don't know. We saw him at Warrior Wrestling. Uh, he destroyed Tom Lawler. It was fucking it's my great. first experience with him. He's fucking awesome. He is fucking awesome. He's great, dude. He's For intense, sure. dude. It's and awesome. Yeah, follow him on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Is he the Twitter. Everyone Must Die guy? No, 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 no. He's not the <laughs> Everyone Must Die. That's uh, Lance Hoyt or Lance Archer, whatever you prefer calling him. Uh, Killer Cross is fucking amazing though. He's got that. He just reminds me of like he's super intelligent, but he's super sadistic. You know, everything he does in his promos is like it's like evil, but it's it's like this holy evil if that makes sense. You know, it's like so backed by knowledge and intensity. It's not just it's not ignorant just for the sake of being like uh, I'm a creepy guy. Who are you you know like it's yeah. it's like hello, Mister. Mr. Jovanovich, I I don't like this. I'm here to break your neck. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, like it, he's just it, for those of you out there that are fans of Killer Cross, you know what I'm talking about. He, he's just in a fucking amazing talent, and he's involved in some fucking uh, bullshit. I didn't know who Killer Cross was, but when you and Ed heard he's going to be at Warrior Six, yeah, he gets flipped out. Yeah, and, yeah. And the two he's Scarlet Bordeaux's uh, so boy toy people, right now. The two people that I was like. Initially, like I was, he was super impressive. Like, the whole match, I met him. I actually met him before, uh, bef- at at the meet and greet. At he Warrior, cool. right? Yeah, Warrior. Yeah, um, that's awesome because I wanted to, but I didn't want to walk away from the fucking mic, and now I'm pissed. And he just did. Uh, he you know he just wrestled. And here's since we're on the subject, not to cut you off. Um, uh, God, what's his name? Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, which everybody can check out. I believe on Fight TV, the Fight TV app just happened. And he had a killer fucking match against Nick fucking Gage, who's the king of the death match right now, a GCW heavyweight champion. He beat Nick Gage, and guess who he fucking calls out? And it was great, dude. Fucking Dave Bautista, dude. Oh, I did read about that. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. It was, I hope that happens, and I hope that Dave fucking accepts and they do something somewhere. people call people out just to call them out? Or yeah. do you think they call them out knowing that? I think I well, I've seen pictures of them in the gym together. I think they've talked, and I think he know. I think here's my opinion on it. I think Killer Cross knows how passionate Dave Bautista is about the business and what he wants from it. Now, is he done from WWE? Yes, but that Dave he could still go because he Dave, could still go and Dave he could Bautista, do one more Bautista match. Triple H match was pretty good, man. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It. But here's the thing. I think Killer Cross versus Dave Batista is a bigger fucking draw than Triple H versus Batista. You know why? Because nobody's seen it. And there's that aura there. There's that it's like wow, you got one fucking big intense dude versus a, you know the current big intense dude and there's yeah. there's so many possibilities. If it doesn't happen, it's a shame, but kudos fucking to cross out there and i was just having a couple of conversations with him over instagram through messenger about You're music so cool yeah um fucking the juice you were know you guys, were you guys talking about Rain dave matthews Rain. band no we were talking about glenn danzig and handsome prick but uh you know among the other <laughs> things um he's just he's a super fucking uh dte guy man and that for you layman's out there that's down to earth he's fucking He's really cool. I really love what he's been doing, and I love the fact he called out Batista. So it's it's kind of a shame the shit that's happened with Impact. 
So moving on from that, though, to get more focused on the positive of Impact, this whole fucking TV deal, it, it's a big fucking deal. So starting after Bound for Glory. So, right, we got Bound for Glory weekend coming up in October. Um, the 18th, the 19th, and the 20th is going to be Chicago, Northwest Indiana centered um, Impact Wrestling. You know, it's going to, we're going to be starting in South Bend with yeah. uh, Warrior if you see Wrestling. Us, come say what's up. We're yeah, also yeah. DT. Yeah. You say? We're, we're DTF. Also DTF. We're down the fuck. F- <laughs> A, B, C, A, K, B, K. A, B, C. Yeah. Please fuck me. Oh, yeah. say sorry. What's up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come we're say hi. Grab very, my cock. Very friendly do whatever people. you want to do. What you know, you ask say? Effie. He, he'd like to when I grab his cock. That's what's in you guys. In the internet. You're damn right. In the internet. <laughs> yes. Um, Sorry, I've already derailed you twice. No, yeah, it's all right. But I, I know saw, where I'm going. I saw a slam. Effie got slammed. There was a highlight that the uh, wrestling, the wrestling with, unicorns. with unicorns guys did. What up, John? What up, Martin? He got dropped on a double thing of chairs. Yeah, yeah. That is not okay. I I, I missed it because that was a so <laughs> that night we watched all that. No, stuff. I did. We I watched, watched it, it live. It's on. We did a highlight video too. It's you on did too, there. But it's not as good as their footage because they were right there. They but. were right there. We were yeah, farther yeah. away, but yeah. Dude literally got dropped on his like he got fucked up. Hey, uh, like yeah. he got dropped that bump in the back of your head if you're a fat ass and he is not a fat ass. He no. is in tip top shape. Good yeah. for you, brother. He's a handsome man. He got dropped right on his like that part co- that connects your spine to your skull. Ooh. But a hell yeah. of a show. Yeah, yeah. That was a hell of a match. It was a hell of a match. Um I and I was talking a uh, shout to our boy Jeremy Telema. Um Senior official for Black Label Pro and now for Warrior Wrestling as well. Senior official. Um, oh, fancy, fancy. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, I know he's got that itch. Anyways, he was telling me about that and he was like, man, he's like, I have a whole new level of respect for Effie after that match, which a lot of motherfuckers should because going against the king of the death match right now, Nick fucking Gage, you know, that whole MDK murder, death, kill cult that he's got going on all that shit um and effie came out there there's the thing a lot of these deathmatch motherfuckers right and i know we're off subject here but we'll get we'll get back on track you know uh, 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 uh. um a lot of these deathmatch guys like to wear you know the the fucking the bandanas the elbow pads yeah they like the camouflage yeah. they like to they like to wear the the kick pads so they don't get hurt you know, the, the barbed wire, the, the tacks, the light bulbs don't really stick that much into them. Effie went out there and fought Nick Gage in fucking fishnets. Fishnets, no pads, just fish boots, nets, fishnets, boner and shorts. trunks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fish boner nets, shorts. trunks, and boner shorts. <laughs> we said trunks and boner shorts. I mean, it's like the oh, same well, thing. Well, I don't know what I'm saying. Get Keep your going, act sorry. together, sorry. motherfucker. I'll lock it down. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, but... So kudos to him and Jerry. I, just, you know, Jeremy was like, man, he earned a lot of respect going through that match and watching that. I mean, I I realized that there, and not just because of what he was wearing. I didn't even think about that afterwards until afterwards, I should say. Um, dude, they were like, killing. Wow, each other. dude! And you guys, you guys can check it out. You go on our Instagram or Facebook or anywhere and see the you know our highlight video of uh, the GCW and Black Label Pro two cups stuffed. At jpdub.com, you can see a picture of me grabbing Effie's bloody cock. <laughs> it's yeah. one of those moving pictures, right? Yeah. So it's one of like, those. You're like tweaking the <laughs> wiener. No, I wasn't tweaking. You and were just like, taking too long. He was like, you're my biggest fan. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> it felt it, in in my hand, he felt like he was our biggest fan. <laughs> 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 Nick! <laughs> Shout out to Effie. We love you. We love you. Mad respect to that dude, man. Yeah. Um, so getting back to Impact, though, the whole Access TV thing is fucking huge. So um, October 18th, 19th, and 20th, right? The 18th and 19th, uh, I believe the 18th, we got uh, Impact and Zello Pro um, and Warrior Wrestling co-hosted event in South Bend. Uh, you guys, you know, check with WarriorWrestling.net. Check with Warrior Wrestling on Facebook, Impact. Uh, Zello Pro, wherever you, you get all your information, you can get it there. Um, so we got that coming up on the 18th. And then the 19th, which is also the All Glory, I think, event, which is in Chicago, another 
co-promote a joint with Warrior and Impact. Hence the reason why Impact was at Warrior Wrestling 6. You know, hawking them tickets. Doing a good job. <laughs> Just we, leave that we're there. We're winking at the camera? Yeah, we're winking All at right, the camera. At the camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I did a better job if you had us doing it for you guys. Right. But anyways, um, nonetheless... They have a huge fucking 18th and 19th, and it all culminates in Chicago at the Odium. The Odium has a lot of his historical significance when it comes to professional wrestling, as far as ECW um, running fucking shows there. Just like, I cannot fucking wait for this. I was at the first Bound for Glory when it was still TNA wrestling in 2008 when Sting fought Samoa Joe for the world title. I was right there in the front row you guys can go watch it on impact plus um if you have it on dvd bound for glory in chicago i was right there they came through my fucking aisle i fucking smacked sting and smojo i marked out hard they got to see the camera yeah and now they got to see my decrypt fuck your opinion shirt you know so that was really cool that was (laughs) (laughs) i wish we were still the band for that but you know whatever (laughs) um Man, dude, there's just I there's no way that I couldn't and we couldn't not be a part of this, you know. I mean, it's in Chicago, it's Impact. Impact to me is will always still kind of be even though you have AEW now and they are I love AEW, but Impact in my heart will always be that second company, you know. They're the ones that were the company you go to when you start to talk about that there is a renaissance coming. You there know? was. I mean, well, like, he, the and even would, before that, the because list. when WWE bought WCW and ECW, there were two companies to kind of crawl out from the ashes of that, and it was Ring of Honor and TNA. Um, TNA kind of took off a little bit more than Ring of Honor did initially, and they got, you know, they got, like, the killer TV deals. They were on Spike, Fox Sports Network, and, you know, they were doing some shit. And they really lumped themselves into some bad booking with Dixie Carter under that regime. And they've just, like I said, dude, they've righted the wrong. And if you guys are out there watching, you can catch Impact. They're live every Friday night. I think they start at 9 o'clock now. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know what the time slot's going to be when they go to Axis because I know Friday night SmackDown is moving to Fox. And who knows what the fuck that's going to be, but... You can check them out on Twitch for free. You can watch uh, previous episodes on Impact Plus, the app. You can download that. Um, obviously, go to their YouTube page and get the highlights. And they, they're they knocking it out of the fucking park. We don't know what they're going to do, but it doesn't... Like, if it was up to them, I'm not, I'm not the guy that runs that shit, but it would make sense for them to keep themselves on Twitch and stay on Access. You just get more eyeballs on there. You know, well, they do, and I think they will. They have a lot of people that are involved with yeah. Twitch. You know, yeah. Ethan Page, shout out to him. He's one of our homies of the show. Oh, yeah, get it, girl, get it. Um, you know, guys I'm like wearing, that, I'm wearing and, Ethan Page shirt. And not only that, I mean, Bound for Glory, it's already been confirmed Moose versus fucking Ken Shamrock, dude. Moose, <laughs> I'm so pumped to see Shamrock back, dude. Dude, Shamrock is 55 years Still old, fucking shredded, yes, sh- ripped up like shredded wheat, man. And I'm excited for the program. I'm here's the thing: people may rip on Impact. Well, well, they're just bringing in old ECW guys and this and that. Okay, so they're bring you. Here's the thing: in a but wrestling company, you need to bring in. You need to have that mix. You need to have the older established legends, and the guys that they've brought in can still go. Yeah, it's not like it was when they were bringing in Flair and Hogan. You know, back in 2010, it, and much respect because I love both them motherfuckers, dude. But it wasn't like that, you know? Like, Hogan had, like, fucking umpteen back surgeries at the time, couldn't do shit. Ric right. Flair was at the—shouldn't have fucking been wrestling anymore, but he did. It's not like that. RVD can still go, has a lot to offer, yep. and a lot from people to learn from in ring, not just as a producer. Because I've never been a fan of that, like, oh, well, you've had your last match, just walk to the back now and produce shit. No. If you can still go— Fucking get in the ring with these guys and give them the rub. I love the rub. You know, we got to do a segment sometime but called dude, the rub. Whatever works, man. The, the nostalgia factor, the, the people, if you loved somebody in the yeah, 90s, dude. 
or in the Dreamer, 80s or whatever, Rhino, and they can still go. Uh, RVD, Sabu is coming yeah. back for one. They were in Vegas doing some tapings. Dude, I just why saw, not bring them back if they could still go and they yeah. could get a pop and, and do it at a decent a level like, and not not make it look embarrassing. I just ran off all my checklist of, of uh, wrestling turns. I'm out of here. <laughs> But I, I'm super stoked about the Ken Shamrock shit, and he's uh, he's been doing a, a good program with Moose as far as what they've been able to do in, you know, during a live recording and outside of that via social media, via promos. Um, and Shamrock also has a, uh, it's uh, I think it's called Valor. It's a bare knuckle fighting promotion that's coming out that's getting ready to debut, and I believe that's going to be on pay per view and all that shit. So that's going to be really cool to check out. Like, he's one of those guys that Dwayne The Rock Johnson, it's insane. The Rock has been tweeting on impact threads like nothing but love for Ken. You yeah. know, and I, I brought this up on the show before, and it's been vice versa. If you guys check out, like, Fight Network, and uh, shout out to uh, George Barbosa and his crew, they do some killer fucking videos. They did some killer shit with RVD, um, with Rhino, uh you know, behind the scenes kind of documentary stuff. And they're doing, they have one with Ken Shamrock. Um, man, you guys really got to check them out. Fight not fight network, which is also owned by Anthem, which is really cool because impact is finally getting at that point where now, okay, you have a network and not only do you just have all the previous history of like the 15 plus years of fucking impact, um, television, like, shit pay-per-views or fucking spike tv show whatever they've done they're really doing some now like wwe does some cool cutting edge behind the scenes shit you know that is exclusive i wouldn't say exclusive because they post it on like youtube and shit too but it, it's more content that is original that's great like the diary shit they do uh, whether it's on lax or rvd or you know anybody that's doing it at the time it's Shout out to those guys because they wanna, are doing it great. You want to finish throwing up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. But uh, yeah, I really dig it. So, uh, bottom line, end of the story on this is, guys, fucking go and check out Impact Wrestling. Follow them on Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. They are on uh, Twitch. You guys Twitch. can watch them. I've mentioned that. Um, they they do a lot of Twitch specials too. Yeah. As far as pay per views and yeah. stuff. Um, there's just, there's a lot of good shit going on with them. And I'm, I just want people to get back up on par and be like, Hey, you know, we may have forgot because of what you guys did, but they've definitely righted the wrong. You know, if you're new to wrestling, jump in. You didn't even have to suffer any of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like me jumping in. That's so I follow like two Twitch channels. That's yeah. one of them yeah, because yeah. I could get on there on Fridays. I ain't got shit to do. It's good. It's good. It's fucking, dude, the storytelling right now in Impact is one of the, and here's the thing, I, we haven't got much from AEW. AEW does a lot of their shit through social media storytelling. They're and brand, Im brand, brand, brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah brand new. But it, Impact is really, man, as far as continuity goes and just the storylines the past two years, whether you're talking about LAX versus the OGs, LAX versus the Lucha Bros, um, the Tessa Blanchard, Sammy Callahan thing, Sammy that Callahan, Eddie awesome. Edwards. Yeah. It's so fucking good yeah, yeah. and well executed. How can you fucking well, somebody deny asked me, them? Like, you know where I'm at with all this stuff. You're, yeah. Like, when we talk about this shit, I do. I, I'm not trying to kiss your ass, but you're the expert and I'm the new guy. <laughs> um, Kiss the but like when somebody says, what do I do? Like, I, what if I don't have cable? What if all this? Dude, if you got internet... We just you told got, you. Yeah, if you got internet and you got Twitch, what do you watch? Here's the thing. For all you out there listening, not to cut you off, but real quick, if, if you fucking love New Japan, ROH, um, AAW, Warrior, WWE, anything, if you can't fucking um, conform to a weekly scheduled program, go to YouTube. It's fucking there. Go to Twitch. It's fucking there. Not only does Impact do so, Impact also does replays of old matches. Yeah, so they do a on lot. Fridays, if you can't be the there match during of the live week. show, they will stream like they're streaming good ass shit. And they'll all have the other hours. Yeah, and they have Ethan Page. Um, they have segments where Who? Ethan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What up, Julian? Uh, <laughs> oh shit! I just I <laughs> get it. Get it, girl. Get it. Um, 
gonna, Ethan Page. I'm cut that. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're not going to cut that. I'll cut you. The North, you know, the, they have uh, things going on um, with Josh Alexander and Ethan Page where they watch old school TNA bits and they like comment on it. You know, yeah. it's like a watch with this yeah, shit. Yeah. It's cool. You it's know? very cool. <laughs> Wait till you guys hear the, the shit that we do when it comes <laughs> to that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, it's going to be insane. I can't wait to... So we're going to give you a little... So in the future, I'm derailing the shit out of this episode. In the future, you're going to get a little uh, preview of a commentary thing. And in the future... Commentary. We're going to announce a uh, a short YouTube series, season one, of a thing that we're going to do. And that commentary thing is going to be a little preview. Yeah. That's all I'm saying about yeah, that. Yeah, that's all you get right I now. got to go. Just... Meet me. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll end it right there with Impact. You guys check it out. Super Pump. The Access TV is a huge fucking deal for them. So shout out to all the boys and the girls in the back and, you know, just doing everything right. They, I'm so fucking proud. And I knew it would happen. I knew once they, I learned of, like, those guys, Don Callis and uh, Scott D'Amore signing on, that hey, it might take a little time. It might be a year or two, but they will win motherfuckers back. And here's the thing. It, I firmly believe this. If AEW didn't exist, Impact would be in their spot. Yeah. Right now. They they would have been, you know, and there's got a lot of Impact guy, or AEW guys worked for Impact. You know, SCU, everybody except for maybe Scorpio Sky. He pro I think he No, I'm wrong on that because I might be misleading you guys. I think he worked some dark matches for them. Mm -hmm. There were nothing that you'll ever see on film. Um but you know, as far as Daniels, Kazarian, uh, the Young Bucks, who were Generation Me, that's where I first learned of them, was through Impact. You know, it wasn't through Pro Wrestling Guerrilla or anything. This was TNA Wrestling, right. you know, back fucking, what, 2010 or some 2009 around there. Like, it's, it's fucking insane. So everybody stop shitting on them and fucking watch them because they are great. It's a better television product than WWE has been. In the last two years. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, I'll sit on your lap. And I'm also going to sit on uh, the topic of the week. (laughs) 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 Top five finishers. (laughs) So (laughs) uh, we're going to go through the top five finishers that Sren picked here. And I, I kind of agree with a lot. I want to talk about them now. Were these uh, placed in any sequential order no. of significance? So here's a thing that's different from everybody else that does top five shit. Because we're going to be doing top five YouTube videos. We got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. All our top five stuff. Um, Everything's is, number one. It's a living and breathing list. It can change at any yeah. point because. Everyone's an asshole, and everybody has their opinion. That's not you true. You guys are all dicks. Everybody has assholes. Everybody's got elbows. So, yeah. So put your so elbows in your. This asshole. is my list as of today, and we're gonna talk about them. Cause some of them. Here's the thing. A couple weeks ago, when we did that whole three days of wrestling thing, one of the things that I kept repeating and people kept saying, "Set then shut the fuck up," and that's what happens when I talk a lot, which I'm doing right now. Is that I will repeat things. And one of the things I'm repeating I'm is trying to derail you doing this weird shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, dude, I am a fan of a finisher being a finisher. And in modern wrestling, one and done. Yes. If so, if you have a finisher, that's why I like Jericho's finisher. Because if you get hit by the elbow of Jericho, whatever it's called, help, <laughs> help me out. What's it called? I always forget. <laughs> I like give me a second because. I have to laugh at that cheesy hey, ass. Hey, Bodie. <laughs> hey, Bodie. Sing that song, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Dude, no. No, 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 no. It's called it, the. It's, uh, it's a it's a Fozzie thing. It's. um. God damn it. But the How thing I is. Know dude, this? I, that's thanks so to all the cervezas. Hey, fucking. If, I'm going to take. I should take this camera. Hey, here's a beer. Here's a beer. Here's a beer. Here's a beer. <laughs> like what we done There's hey guess what and hey, we don't have fucking shit written out in front of us this is all from memory so if we if we kind of like jippy a little bit then just fucking go with it and just know that like hey when so, that guy sobers up he knows what he's talking about <laughs> because we fucking do you know it's just it's just like, hell yeah, yeah uh but what is it called the rings of jericho <laughs> 
No, it's not the Rings of Jericho. It, it's the fucking. Uh, it's the. Uh, I'm gonna get it here. Google here we go. It. All right. Here we go. It's gonna come. It's it gonna. Is, it's the I Judas said, elbow. Yes. The Judas, the Judas effect. effect. Yes. Yep. The Judas effect. Yeah. The Jusus effect. <laughs> yeah. There, there's. Yeah. There's not that many finishers that actually are finishers, and his finisher so far has fucked everyone up. I yeah. like that because when it's only I been two matches though. But that's also when I know, like, if you do a finisher in a match, that's when I know to officially, in a long and wonderful match, jump out of my seat, jump mm-hmm. out the window, jump off the ledge. I know to go, oh, my God. Well, that's here's the thing, though, about. too, is uh, when we were all out, I didn't see that coming. No. It, it, it was one of those things where I was like, it was a surprise. It was a so, surprise, and I was happy that it was a surprise. Here, here's ended. the thing. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to fucking speak for you. For a minute. So all you people out there in the JP Wu that are listening, Sretton is a guy that is old school. He likes a finisher to be a finisher and you don't fucking kick out. Okay. Um Yeah. Not to say that, you know, you're not a fan of what you've seen because a lot of here's the thing. A lot of uh the way wrestling's been booked nowadays, depending on how hard you're going in the match, if you're kicking out of these <laughs> Yeah, if you're kicking out of that, oh, you're no. a fucking real man. I got a cloud cl- driver. I got so much cleaning to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're kicking out of a fucking finisher nowadays, I mean, it can still really be a part of a great match. Like, holy fuck. Like, do they've the been Young going Bucks, so hard. Lucha yeah. Brothers match? Everybody does it a lot. I don't even know how it I, finished. I get where you're coming yes. from because it can be overdone. And I do think that there's a lot. There's a hey, fuck it, man. There's it's not just AEW or WWE or there's everybody's guilty of it because okay, in order to make this match seem like man, it's they're really going hard or they're doing this, this, and that, you got to kick out of fucking umpteen finishers. Like, eh, I two max is for me. Same. If you kick out of it fucking twice, if you. That's it. You know, I'm going like, to try to say this can't. as fast as I can. Are you ready? I, I Here's the thing. A lot of these matches, if the, you know they're going to be a main event match, they want to make it a, like you did 45 minutes to an hour. If you want to make it 45 minutes to an hour, that's not fresh. If every pay-per-view you watch or every uh, uh, televised thing you watched, it, you know that the main event matches, which is the last two or three matches, are going to be 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Fuck that. What if a match is only like one minute long? Like as Sid Vicious. What are we going to do? I'm going to fucking powerbomb you. You're going to walk out of the stage. What if every once in a while you get a shorter match? I want a little more uh, stressfulness in the match. That's why the finisher is important to me. You might launch a finisher 10 minutes into a match, and if it actually finishes, awesome, because I don't know what's going to happen next time. That's it. It doesn't have to be six minute, 60 minutes every time. It doesn't have to be 45 minutes every time. It could be five minutes. That's it. Got to go. Meet me. Here's my thing. Micro machines. You get them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I tried to knock that out. You were man. channeling the micro machines guy. I tried. Uh, no, I totally agree with you. So, and with that being said, let's uh, let's review the last. Okay. All right. No, no significant sequential order, right? No, no. no. Okay, no, okay. It's just five moves. All right. Although I, I will put um, what you got listed as number one here as. All right. The number one? Yeah, I, I think. The DDT. I agree. I that's that's a devastating fucking move. I think it's been bastardized uh throughout the years. You don't fucking kick out of a DDT. And here's the thing. I was in high school, right? I was fucking laying on the D on on the court at lunch, right? And this fucking dude Ruben, this Mexican dude, it's fucking I, he's the, he's all hot shot, you know, he's probably listening at, at the time we're talking about late 90s, so he's probably thought he was a no limit soldier or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> And I'm like, no, fuck you. I'm Dennis Rodman, dude. NWO for life. Too sweet. And when you meet me, bro, I was laying that fucking defense on him, laying yeah. on that juice. And he couldn't handle it. He got pissed. So he couldn't do anything when he had the ball because I just stuck it to him thick on D. And he fucking, he shoved me, dude. Got he was getting, salty. He got salty. So you know what I fucking did? You salted him. I straight up DDT'd the motherfucker in real life. On the gym court, dude. Like he asked a lot of motherfuckers, ask Big Ed the Assassin. He knows about that. Ask Butch Van Lee. They know about that. Um, and it, it was it was one of the th- things that shouldn't have happened, but it did. 
and not even really thinking about it because when it when it happened to me, I was like, "Fuck this kid, fuck him," you know. Like, I'm gonna do something. As re- I could have fucking killed the kid, you know. Like that. That I did a legit wrestling move, and I did. I didn't hold back. There was nothing. I was driving his fucking skull into the gym court, you know. And I had the gym uh, teacher pull me off, like, "Yeah, fucking kill him!" Like, like whatever. Good you know, Wood Gibbs. I served my suspension or wherever the fuck it yeah. was. But uh, it's a devastating yeah. move, dude. I believe that all the coolest moves nowadays, like what's the based one? Off Canadian the Canadian Destroyer. Everything is based off. The well, DDT. Hey, it's based off a of DDT and another one we're gonna get to. DDT here. and what? Uh, what yeah, you're gonna say yeah. combined? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, <sighs> hey, Jake the Snake, studio is always open to you. Yeah, for sure. He was just down. He was like what two buildings down last year, or is that two years ago now? Last summer. Was that last summer? Maybe. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Who knows? We're yeah. Just yeah. Next. But, but the DDT, like Even Flow, used to be one of my favorite movies. Moves, movies. Yeah, yeah. E- Even Flow used to be one All of my favorite movies. Up, I didn't. I, I actually hated the name. <laughs> no knock against Raven. No, no knock against Raven. What? Uh, Even Flow. Who sang that? Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. No knock against Pearl Jam, but I just fucking knock them all you want. But but like. I used to do even flows no to respect. everybody, which is just a DDT. Yeah, I used to do DDTs to everybody. That was my move. When it's I a was devastating move. It yeah. really is to me. It's like one of the most devastating finishers ever in professional yeah. wrestling. So yeah. if we were to be a sequential significance, number one, I would appreciate that. And doesn't is that one of is that Tessa Blanchard's uh, finisher? Um, yeah, she yeah she uses a DDT. Yeah, all right. Sorry. She's really fucking good with it. <laughs> Next. I, figure four leg lock. You ever been put in a real figure four? I no. I also never could figure it out. I always loved doing the spin, mm. lock one leg in, and do the turn. But here's the thing: it's it's got to be it's got to be rigged to do that because ain't no motherfucker gonna turn let unless you. he's passed. Ah, <laughs> yeah, dude. I like, Nobody's fuck gonna that. Let you I've do been it. in a figure four. It sucks. Yeah, you know. But <sighs> one of my so I I don't lo- know. I don't really know though if I would have put this on the list of uh you know like what I put the, it on the list all I mean of all time I get it I do get it because it, that is super um I mean nature boy fucking Ric Flair uh it's the best and I believe he stole that from uh Buddy Rogers um I may be wrong about that you guys <laughs> let us know in the comments um it's the best storyteller finisher because it's good I love when you the start it back, like- you start it and they're like, no, no. They're like, oh shit! Like people that are for the person getting put on it, mm. people that are get, that are for the the person putting it on. Everybody reacts the same way with this energy. They start screaming, and then the turn. Somebody hops. Yeah, over they the always one leg, turn it. They always you, reverse you hop it. Hop over the leg, and everybody goes crazy. And when you lock it in, oh, it just it it, it it's like a it's like a two and a half step process step process of pops. Yeah, yeah. Not vinyl pops either, you fucking nerds. Um, <laughs> sorry, I almost bought a pop of emeritus too. Fucking vinyl pop today. Um, pile driver. There we go. That's the one I was alluding to earlier when I was talking about the DDT. Yeah. Um, those to me are the two most devastating finishers. Well, except for this other one you got listed here. Wasn't the pile driver so devastating that they kind of banned it? Yeah, a lot. A lot of companies. I have banned it throughout the uh, course of history. Um, I mean, it's straight up, man. Just fuck. Dropping a motherfucker on his head. You know, yeah. Owen Hart did. Stone Cold broke his neck. Yeah. Um, he's not the first story of that. It's No. Fuck, dude. You imagine, like, a real fight busting out a pile driver on somebody? That's murder. How many, how, so, Stone Cold, who did it to him? Owen Hart. Own heart. Mm-hmm. So you just said that twenty seconds ago. You um, did, Dick. This is this is why uh, Undertaker's a legend. Tombstone never hurt a soul. Never hurt that anyone. I know of. That I know of. And maybe somebody I walked away sore, but yeah. Every time he did it, you were like, "Holy shit!" Mm-hmm. It didn't matter how big that person was. It didn't matter anything. They, he'd fuck him up. Done. Done. Yeah. 
the, the ultimate finisher. Because I actually, like, the thing he did where he would, like, put your uh, arms on your chest, and then he put his dick in your face. I never <laughs> yeah. liked that. Yeah. Say, hey, there's a Grim Reaper song. <laughs> Shout out to all you 80s uh, fucking metal fans out there. Fonz. Fonz. I got. We'll sing an unlappen of Deutsch. All of a sudden, I'm Das Wunderkind, Alex. Take it easy. All you metal fans out there, Grim Reaper. Suck it and see. I have that on vinyl. It's a real deal. Check it out. Maybe like rest in peace with my balls on your face. So they met Joey Ryan and they got the whole rest in penis. I love that shit. I don't care. Fuck you guys if you don't like it. You don't know how to have fun and live your life. People um, like stuff. I don't like it. You like it. That's fine. You don't like rested penis? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's funny. You it like it. Funny. Yeah. Joey so, Ryan's shit. Though. Point proven. Dick flipping. Not, not Yeah, yeah. Not he me. he really likes it, Joey. Don't listen to this fucking. Not for me. But the Bulgarian door's always bastard. Joey. Speaking of doors Bulgarian always open. bastards, where the fuck has Rusev been? Anyways, moving on. Nobody uh, knows. The sharpshooter. The, A.K.A. the Scorpion Deathlock, a move that I know Bret Hart learned from. Take a guess. Do you know? Uh, Jesus. Actually, yes. Ding, ding, ding. That is incorrect. <laughs> Who? He learned from Conan. Really? In Mexico. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yep. That's good. Yeah, hey, Conan. Fucking, doors yeah, always open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, we'll Inferno. keep it 100. I don't know if I like you, but I like disco the doors always Beaver. open. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, Conan. We'll open the doors to you, but uh, I don't know that. The reason I like the, sharp, the reason I put the sharpshooter on there is the same reason I put the figure four leg lock on there, is because of the crowd reaction when you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I think uh, if you're, I, I do agree with that. Um, as far as a leg submission goes, and it, wrestling's so weird because you, I mean this. And I'm just weird myself when you when you develop lists. I mean, they just to me, it's always I'm so OCD, and like you got to break them down in the certain categories of these lists and whatever. That's why we give them but, a uh, pulse, man. That's why they're right, living, breathing. Right. Um. I I really like the STF. I think you know, like the crossface that that should be on here, but uh, unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> I could add stuff. I don't um. Like you know, sharpshooter was definitely a. That's another one, man. You ever been in a sharpshooter or a scorpion no. deathlock? No. It fucking sucks. Especially no if you really sit back on that fucking thing, dude. It's snap snap a motherfucker's back and call it a day, you know? Um, but I want to move on real quick to number five, which is, I mean, the fucking power bomb. You know, I mean, come on, you know? It is a really fucking devastating move. Um, look at some of the guys who have done it and done it well. I mean, fuck, I, well, Kevin Here, Nash broke the giant's neck, I think, or something Here's what like I've that. been thinking. Because he couldn't Back in the him. day, the people that did the powerbomb, everyone was over six. Shout out to our six. boy, Sid Vicious. Hell yes. Everyone was over six, six that yeah. did the powerbomb to people. So if someone drops you yeah. from, like, if somebody's six, six from and the they heavens. throw that shit down, you're coming down seven <laughs> feet. Straight to hell, baby, yeah. You're getting close to terminal velocity. You're getting dropped. Your spine's going to crack. Your back's going to crack. Your butt's going to crack. Pussy's going to crack. You're going to get a second butt crack. Pussy, Ooh. butt crack, all that stuff. <laughs> i got to edit a little bit. Uh, no, you uh, But, like, nowadays, people are a little shorter. The average wrestler is a little shorter. So you get powerbomb from somebody that's, like, 5'8", 5'10", 5'11", 6 foot, 6'2". Six it's not going to hurt as much. I don't know, though. I, I remember back in the day in WCW, Jericho had a move where he did, like, the multiple power bomb. Yes. And it was, like, you know, like five power bombs. And it was still, it was, I think, actually, it's one of the moves in fucking uh, WCW NWO Revenge or, like, uh, it was one of the N64 games, either WrestleMania 2000 or No Mercy, one of those. Um, I just think as a move in general, without size being a factor involved, fucking devastating yeah i mean essentially when you look at like razor's edge it's kind of like a power bomb it's one of everybody's favorite i've finishers. been re-looking at razor's edge and there's like uh what culture did a, like a uh, five finishers that people just never recovered from like mm -hmm. if you did it it's like yeah, yeah historically yeah, you that. never you always got pinned right after yeah and razor's edge was one of them and i just always thought that i never liked the razor's edge and i didn't know that be only because i thought that the razor's edge was 
really, really hard for him to do. Like, you had to pick a dude up off the ground from behind you and throw him into the air in front of you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a testament to how fucking strong Razor Ramon was. Like, like Yeah, yeah. For him to be able to do that, like, to, to everyone that he wrestled that he was, like, that he did it to. Like, he's... <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo, I'm super strong. Mm-hmm. Me but and yeah. Dolly. Me and Dolly used to do this thing where I would, like, do a lot of squats to get strong. What would you add to the list? You got one move. Uh, the cross face. Yeah. STF or the uh, crippler cross face, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's a shitty move to be put in. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I would add. I always remember when MMA, like, uh, I always thought it was crazy that one of the moves that were allowed is if the, they, they have the gloves that are a little bit bulky, like mm-hmm. around the palm, and you're allowed to you're allowed to kind of stick your glove into the other dude's mouth, like, and, like, rub their face. And <laughs> so, like, cross face moves, absolutely it, su- it sucks if somebody's trying to, like, yeah. puts their hand across your mouth where your jaw connects and can disconnect if somebody puts just a little bit of pressure on it. Just a wee bit. Next! <laughs> next. Uh, next, I want to talk about some events coming up. Um, the 21st, we have a Black Label Pro, and they're running the Turbo Grap 16 tournament. Um, now, this was originally scheduled to be at RDS Gym in Crown Point, and they moved it so they can maximize and be logistic with a a partner that you wrestling fans are well aware of because you fucking love it. Game Changer Ooh. Wrestling, uh-huh. GCW. Um, they're hosting the Nick Gage Invitational. That takes plur- uh, plurs. It takes sure plurs. By God, it takes plurs. Heaven flow. Terrence Run. Why do do it? <laughs> <laughs> it takes place on the, <laughs> on the 21st. Um, it there's it's weird because here's the thing so black label and gcw are sharing the same building right um it's going to be black label pro turbo grab 16 for all you video game net uh nerds out there that get that you know nerds. i fucking love it. nerds i fucking love it though turbo graphics 16 turbo grab 16 it's a uh, yeah Check out Black Label Pro, blpwrestling.com, which is where you can score tickets, Um, blpmerch.com, all that shit, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're everywhere. Anyway, September 21st, uh, the first session will take place at noon. Um, It's going to be a two-semi-final Fatal 4-Way match uh, leading to an epic tournament finale. Um, So round one, block A, you got uh, Warhorse versus Lucky Kid. Our boy Ethan Page versus Jody Fleisch. Ethan! Hello! Uh, Laredo Kid. Um, I don't know who they replaced him with yet, so if you're hearing this, I apologize. Apologize. Kiss it. Kiss it. Kiss it. And then Google it. Yeah, yeah. Google it. Because, you know, like I said, if you if you look up Black Label Pro on any of these social media platforms, you'll be able to find out who his replacement was. He's not able to participate, but he was going against Carlos Romo which uh, we saw at Warrior Wrestling. Um, Alley Cat versus Danny Adams. That should be fucking awesome. And then uh, round one, block B, you got uh, Jeremy Wyatt versus Tom Lawler. You got Jake something, another impact guy we were just talking about earlier, um, versus GCW heavyweight champion Nick fucking Gage. You got Gary J versus Matthew Justice, who was managed by our man Fonzie. Yeah, baby. Yeah, Daddy. What's the interview going to be like? He, I find he's not going to be there, but uh, he's been doing some stuff. That's what when we yeah. uh, when uh, when Justin was talking about like uh, the inter- like he was talking with uh, with Fonzie beforehand. He's like, hey, hey, "We're going to do the oh, that, Daddy. The interview is going to be good, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Daddy. Shout out to our boy Fonzie. Um, and then Eric awesome. Stevens versus awesome. a mystery opponent. Um, not only that, we do we have Jordan Grace versus D'Lo Brown. D-Lo fucking Brown. <laughs> yeah, that's really taking place. You have our boy Swoggle, who we've had on the show, versus Marco Stunt. 
AEW fucking member. of the century. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was a good shot caught in there. Um, BLP Midwest Championship. Uh, the champ, AJ Gray. Uh, you could hit him up on Twitter at Rich Homie Juice. How do I know that? How do I remember that, you might ask? Because maybe my name's in it a little bit. <laughs> uh, versus Logan James. That's going to be one hell of a fucking match. You got Bear Country versus Violence is Forever. Um, our boy Alex Zane versus Blake Christian. And all of this is followed by the uh, Nick Gage Invitational. So check that shit out. Look up uh, Game Changer Wrestling. Look up Black Label Pro on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you know, YouTube. Do all that shit. They're fucking everywhere. Buy the tickets. Go to the show. Support our fucking homies, you know. And tell them that the juice sent you. Support our friends and mention us and say... You were listening to the show, and that's why you're here right now. Yeah, that is that is correct. You know what else is correct? Um, I'm going to take this minute now uh, for all you metal maniacs out there. My boy Brad, who is the drummer slash mother brain of Handsome Prick, has yet another... Mother brain! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another release coming out. Uh, it's been long overdue. His band Poor... Uh, he moved out to California in 2012 after our first band, Decrypt, ended um, and joined up with Neil Berkdahl, who is from the band Fatalist and Dirty Dead as well, not to mention Whimsical for all you uh, people out there who into, what do you call that? What, what, what did Joe always, what was he into? The, the shoegaze, shoegaze, shoegaze type shit. Um, so... Him and Neil, he moved out there in California in 2012. Uh, they had started this band. They had like a demo recorded, uh, Poor Point of Our Resistance is what it stands for. Um, they put out one album in 2012 called Extinction of Trust. Uh, just fucking killer grind. Like, for you guys, uh, check them out. They're on Bandcamp right now. That. Now, this company, Meet 5000 Records, is re-releasing the first album, but they are also putting out the long-overdue sophomore effort, which is called uh, Glutton for Punishment. Look into the camera when you say that. I'm looking at you. I'm going to look at the camera. Yeah, yeah. Glutton it, for Punishment. For Punishment. That drops on October 15th. Um, you can check it out via meet5000records.bandcamp.com. I think there's six songs already. Uh, if you pre-order, you can listen to And even if you don't pre-order, you can listen to them now. But uh, you can download now. Uh, it's, it's fucking going to be a blast. It's going to be, if you guys are looking for some old school Swedish grind mixed with like new school type shit, it's uh, it's just fucking amazing. Anything this kid touches is amazing. You listen to Hands of Pricks, fucking amazing. You listen to Dirty Dead, it's yep. fucking amazing. Yep. Yep. Listen to yep. Decrypt, it's fucking yep. amazing. Yep. You know, you listen to Poor, it's fucking amazing. Prolific maniac. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Anything they do is fucking great. And also, you can uh, the latest issue of uh, Decibel Magazine. You can check that out. It's on newsstands now. You can uh, you can actually find a nice little advertisement. For both albums, like I said, the first album, Extinction of Trust and Glutton for Punishment, drop October 15th via Meet 5000 Records. Um, find them on Bandcamp. You can find Poor, that's Point of Our Resistance, on Facebook. They're on fucking, no, they're not on Instagram or Twitter. Just look on Facebook and Bandcamp, and you'll find them, guys, there. It's fucking, dude, it's really good shit, man. They got a lot of really cool covers, too. I'm not even going to fucking let you guys know what they got coming for the covers, but you got to find out. I got I got, I got, to leave a little bit of mystery in there, but I, I know that you, you fucking doom rock guys will fucking like it. Just you, you shred metal fans hint, will like hint. it. Yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of really good shit on this record. Um, We're going to be dropping a track here soon. Like I said, there's six tracks out now. I'm going to... You know, work my magic and uh, get you guys an exclusive track before the record drops. So look for that in the next week or two. Um, and not only that, my band, which is also Brad's band, uh, Handsome Prick, 
We're live in fucking Chicago. We're live for the first time in several months because, you know, we've been hard at work on album number three, uh, getting that ready for the fucking masses. Uh, not only that, uh, real quick before I get into our live show, um, there is a festival based out of the Czech Republic called Obscene Extreme. Um, and it would really, really just rub me all the right ways if you guys would look them up. Obscene Extreme, I believe it's ObsceneExtreme.com. Um, I don't know if it's .com, dot .net, to be honest with you. I just copy and paste the links because of star. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Juice will never lie to you. Um, but anyways, the short end of that stick is you can vote for us to be on this fucking fest. This is a, a fest that's uh, 21 years old now. And this, as far as, like, you underground metalheads, like, death grind, fucking uh, death metal, grindcore freaks out there, help us out. Get on there, because they need us out in the Czech Republic. They it's need a great the scene out there, and you guys it's should great. be It's great. We, we could be playing on... I, I just here's a, here's a fun fact for you. I just uh, shouted our boy Darren. Stop! I, he just hooked me up with a documentary, the 20th anniversary of it. Oh. which took place this past year. Um, Cherby, however you want to say it, because I think that's how they pronounce it in Czech. Uh, it's it's Kirby. It's spelled Kirby, but I think it's Cherby. It's perfect pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, they're interviewing all these guys. You got Barney Greenway from Napalm Death. You got guys from Crippled Bastards, um, Bird Flesh, like all these huge influential grind bands and European bands. Um, and they're talking about, like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's there's no security there. There's, like, a few thousand people at these fests, and, like, guys being interviewed are like, yeah, well, you know, it's a great thing. You're up on the stage playing your music, and you look to you, and somebody's <laughs> just fucking on stage, and, uh, you know, there's people dressed like bananas and all this other crazy shit, and they're just fucking. <laughs> it's great. You know, like, it, it's it's one of those things, like, you know, in the States, everybody talks about alternative and do you really need to establish a sound to the term alternative or does it just need to be a happening, which is what I think this is with uh, Obscene Extreme because it's just it's people being real and having fun for the sake of music. Like If you want to go out there and party your fucking dick off, you're going to do it. As long as you're fucking cool to everybody, you know? Like, there's no... It's a really cool scene. There's no bad vibes, yeah. man. It's just... So help us out... Um, we're one of the bands that are eligible um, to play next year, and you can vote for Handsome Prick if you visit ObsceneExtreme.com and vote for us to fucking do it. Uh, you can also, if you go to the Handsome Prick uh, fucking band page, uh, any any page that we're on, we're on uh, Facebook at HP Grind. Um, we're also on Facebook at HP Grind. Um, hit us up on there, Instagram, Handsome Prick Grind. And fucking vote for us. We want to go out there. We want to destroy shit. We want to fucking do it for you guys. We want to do it for ourselves. We want to do it for the sake of, like, the Czech Republic needs the prick. It fucking needs it. And if you guys are really needing it, um, this Saturday, the 21st, we'll be at Livewire Lounge. Uh, Three days from now. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fucking dysphoria, old school, if you guys are into that shit. Fucking, they're going to be rocking the joint. W along with us in three other bands it's 12 bucks the doors open at seven show starts at eight fucking get there be square come buy some merch hang out with us fucking you know smoke some dope what up rvd i'm looking at you kid sabu um yeah yeah it's gonna be a good time in chicago just hanging out kicking yeah. it like we do you know so and you've been some of our shows it's yeah. just like to have fun we're brutal in nature but it's you know, awesome we're just some dudes fucking living it, man. Yeah. You know, preaching Thing that is, filth. They play, they're intense, they throw it like so Wallace jumps on there. Uh don't be surprised if uh all he's wearing mm -hmm. is shorts. <laughs> and then afterwards you can uh have a Budweiser with them and talk about music. Yeah. Or and have wrestling, a good time. Or whatever you want. Whatever they're all you about the good do. time. Yeah. There's yeah. a reason they play and it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's cool. Yeah. For sure, and I can't wait, you know, for everybody. Hey, and there's no tickets. <clears throat> you don't have to go to, like, a ticket website or anything. Just show up. Just show up. It's Live Wire Lounge in Chicago. They're on fucking, you know, Facebook, Instagram, fucking Twitter, all that shit. Google it. And... <clears throat> oh. 
Yeah. Got it? Show up there. Good. So much to throw up in here right now. There's a lamina. Lamina. There's I'm a, gonna, there's I'm a, I'm gonna pee my pants. I know I gotta piss too. So on that note, hey, we gotta leave you. Be sure to check us out. You know, check out Poor when it drops the new Poor album, Glutton for Punishment, October fifteenth. <laughs> be sure to check out Handsome Prick. Come see me. Come hang out with us. Friend's gonna be there too, or at least he's I'll gonna pretend there. like he's gonna be there. I'll be there. September twenty first. Done playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. there though. Yeah, yeah. But come say hi, and uh, maybe yeah. I'll hand you out some free swag and uh, touch your dick a little bit. What am I? What I'm up, what I'm up, what I'm up, just because. You gonna do sex to me?